Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at the centroids of volumes. Centroids of volumes. Now we've already looked at centroids of areas pretty extensively. So if you'll remember if I've got an xy plane and I've got some area in the xy plane, I can pick a point and take some little dA of area and that little dA of area is going to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate and that is going to be the position of that little DA. I could have another little DA over here, another one over there. I could cover this entire area with little DAs. Each one would have its own coordinates. And if I average the positions of all of those coordinates, that would give me the centroid. And so if you remember the formula for the centroid of an area, the X coordinate is just the integral of the X DA over the integral of dA and of course we've seen how to use geometry to figure out what the dA is and then we plug it into the formulas and do the integrals and it's uh, been pretty straightforward but we can also talk about centroids of three-dimensional objects and so we could have a z-axis out here and this could be a, some sort of three-dimensional volume and so these would not be little segments of dA but they would be little segments of dV. And so that's what we want to look at how to handle. How do we deal with centroids of volumes, not just areas? Well, by analogy, the formula is going to be very similar. You're going to have an, a little piece of dV that's going to have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate, and that is going to give you the position of that little piece of volume. And remember, that's what dV is. It's just a little piece of volume. And so we can break our, vo our big volume into many small little pieces of volume dV. We can cover the whole thing with little dVs, each with their own coordinates. And then we can average together all the x positions. That'll give us the x centroid. We can average together all the y positions for the y centroid, all the z positions for the z centroid, and that's what we get and the formula is pretty much exactly the same that we had before, but instead of integrated over dA, we have to integrate over dV. So let's look at an example of how we might do this. And this example is simply to find the centroid of a right circular cone with height h and radius r. And so we can see the radius is going to be along there, and the height is along the x-axis. So the x-axis is the central axis of this cone. Now our formula is going to be simply for the x-centroid is going to be x dv over dv integrated and that gives us the formula for calculating that centroid. Clearly the trick is to figure out what the dv is because once we know what the dv is we simply plug it in and do the integral. So how do we get the element dV? Well, I'm sure you all remember from Calculus 2, the method of disks, the method of washers, that sort of thing. Well, that's basically what we're going to do here. We're going to break the volume of our cone into little bitty disks. And so each disk is going to have a volume dV. And so the thickness of the disk is just going to be some dx. And you can see that indicated in the picture here. That's the thickness of this little disk, which we're going to be using to find our dV. And so if I go out along the x-axis to some x, that would be the left-hand side of our volume element dV. I go a little bit further dx, that creates another slice, and that makes a uh, second circular surface that is offset just a little bit. And if you look at that, our little dV is actually a little squat cylinder. And so to get the volume of our dV, we simply have to apply the formula for the volume of a cylinder. But we have to know what that formula is. Now, if you remember from your high school geometry, the formula for the volume of the cylinder is the area of the base. And since this cylinder here is a circular cylinder, the area of the base is going to be pi r squared, and then that's going to be times the h. Now, what's the h in our cylinder? It's going to be the little dx. 
we can possibly see this a little bit more easily if we consider a cutout of our cylinder. This is just a slice along the XY plane. And so this is simply one slice of our cylinder making what is essentially a triangle. Now the reason that we do that is because that's going to let us find the volume of our little dv. Consider the line which is basically the boundary of the cone. So this line right here is the line going up and if we take the slice of that in the xy plane that's going to be that line there. We know that the height of the cylinder from here to here is h and we know the radius from here to here Again, that's going to be the radius from the center line out to the edge of the uh, circle that makes the base of the cone. That distance is going to be r. And so the, the rise of this line would be r, and the run would be h. The line itself would have an equation which is simply the slope times x. The rise over the run, r over h times x. So that gives us the slope of this line, and the equation for the line is simply r over h times x. Now, why is that useful? Because if I come out from the origin out some distance x, I know the height here to the boundary of my cone is simply going to be this r over h times x. That's the radius of my little dv. In other words, this capital R divided by H times X, that is the radius of my little cylinder that makes up my dV. Now, what's the height of my cylinder? That's just the dx. So, if I plug those values into the volume formula, that'll give me the little volume of my little squat cylinder that I'm using to make my dV. Plugging in the formula, we see that we have pi r squared, now what's the r? That's the radius of our little cylinder here, which we know is capital R over h times x, and then that whole thing is squared, and this guy here, this dx, is the height. So this is the formula for the cylinder. This is the pi, oops. Pi r squared h. And so that's the r squared, that's the h, and of course the pi goes there, and that gives us our volume. Okay, so now we can plug these values into our formula. We have that the centroid is going to be x dv over dv, integrated of course. And so when we plug in the values, we know our our this is basically the radius of our cylinder, so we've got pi r squared, and the dx is the h. So this is the formula for our dv. So we can see the same below is our dv. That's our dv. And then up above we have x times dv. We just plug those values in. Now what's interesting is that we have a bunch of constants that are both in the numerator and in the denominator. Those constants can all pull out of the integrals and we'll see that they're the same above as below, so they'll all cancel. So I can cancel out those guys, I can cancel out those guys, I can cancel out the pi's, and what I'm left with is the integral from 0 to h of x cubed dx divided by the integral from 0 to h of x squared dx. Everything else cancels. That's pretty easy integrals to do. And so we do the integral of x cubed, we get x, four, x to the fourth over 4, which we can see here. And then we do the integral of x squared, we get x cubed over 3, and the limits are going to be from 0 to h. Why are our limits from 0 to h? Because our integral is over dx. Our integral is over dx and our x goes from 0 to the height of the cylinder h. And so plugging in those values, you end up with x bar, which is the centroid. Now again, what does that mean? That's the average location of all the little volume elements. It's the average position of the volume of the cylinder, and the dv is equal to 3 fourths times the height. So that gives us the answer for the centroid along the x-axis 
for this cone. And that's basically all that we need.